What's up guys, we're back with week four Monday Night Football action. We're going to dive in and break down both these games and see what kind of value we can find on the side and on the total. And we're going to do a deep dive on the player props for both of these matchups. Also, I'm going to jump in and cover this weird MLB playoff mess that the Braves, Mets, and Diamondbacks have gotten themselves into and give you some plays on that. So buckle up. We've got a great video for you today. Kind of a rough Sunday during the day there on NFL, guys. Not so hot there on the video picks. We've still got the Ravens to go, so hopefully they can come through for us. But on the premium side, we did a bit better. We had the Raiders plus two, the Chargers plus seven and a half. We had the Vikings at plus two and a half. That was a big five unit play over there on the Vikings. So cashing that one felt pretty good. The Steelers minus two they let us down having such a bad start to that game and Arizona minus three and a half guess it's time to stop betting against Jaden Daniels because that dude is looking like he is absolutely on fire but diving in here to this Monday night slate guys if you want to win all of your bets tonight hit that like button it's good luck and show support for the channel and all the hard work we're putting in here every single day subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on our daily content you can now also sign up for a channel membership by clicking the little join button right below the video members get exclusive early access to all NFL and college football videos and get their names up on screen just like right now. I really appreciate the support from all of you. Seeing that badge next to your comments out there absolutely warms my heart. Our videos are sponsored by StumpTheSpread.com. We have a team of experienced cappers over there for every major sport, currently covering MLB, NCAA football, UFC, and the NFL with NHL games, guys, right around the corner. This is one of the best times of the year to be in the mix with so many sports going on. Click the link in the description if you're interested in signing up and also to join our free email list to get the occasional free or premium pick straight to your inbox and to track our new 100 to ten thousand dollar challenge which is going on right now comment below with any bets you're looking at today and we will give you our best advice on all of them we are committed to responding to every single comment every day so let us know anything you want to say about my picks these videos or anything you see here as always our favorite picks will be in the pinned comment down below now let's get into our first monday night game guys we've got the tennessee titans going on the road to take on the miami dolphins tennessee comes into this game still looking for their first win of the season it's been a bit rough out there levis has not had a great time the defense has been uh okay at times but maybe a little bit suspect at times as well especially like last week where they got obliterated by the packers losing 30 to 14 in that game we saw more mistakes from levis getting to be a pretty uh, pretty solid habit that you can count on Levis to make some bad choices out there. He got picked off twice, sacked eight times. And while I'm not going to put every single one of those sacks at his doorstep, like not every single time he got sacked was his fault, but man, a lot of that is his unwillingness or inability to get the ball out of his hands in any sort of, you know, quick period of time. Yeah, completing 26 of 34 passes for 260 yards looks pretty good. So definitely some positives there. Got to give the guy a little bit of credit, but man, it is rough to watch. And it just seems uh, largely due to this offensive line. This poor guy just cannot get going. What kind of rhythm are you supposed to get in when you're constantly running for your life? But also, sometimes you just got to take that sack. You can't try to force the ball in as much as he does. It has become a constant, constant concern here for this offense. It seems that the coach is getting pretty sick of him. I think another few performances like this where he's turning the ball over a bunch, definitely going to end up with him on the bench. And he also fumbled the ball away once last week against the Packers. So just not a ton of positive things for me to say here about Levis. And the running game also not doing a good job of taking pressure off of him. Obviously, if you don't have a good offensive line, you're going to struggle to run the ball. And yeah, when you're also down a huge in the first quarter, you're going to, you know, not have a lot of time to dedicate to the running games like that as well. So very, very rough things for them last week on the offensive side of the ball. On defense, they also had a really, really rough time. They're going up against Malik Willis. So, you know, you're facing a backup quarterback. Now is the time for your defense to really shine, but they couldn't really get it done, guys. They gave up over 200 yards passing in that game, allowed a second stringer to complete 13 of 19 passes. They only sacked him three times. They did not force him into a single turnover. So not a great look there for the defense. They also couldn't stop the running game, but that's looking like something a lot of teams are going to struggle with for, against Green Bay. I mean, they're a team that can run the ball pretty well and throw a running quarterback into the mix. Things got very, very rough there for the Titans defense that just, I mean, that's supposed to be the main strength of this team and it's been a bit rough out there. So not a ton of positives for the uh, Titans so far this season or last week. So yeah, look a bit rough out there. I mean, over the course of the season, guys, they're 24th in the National Football League in points allowed per game. They're in the they're a bottom four team in terms of passing yards per game. Just not a lot of great things to say about the Titans right now. And looking at their uh, you know their injury report coming into this game, they're completely healthy on offense. 
So that's a positive, although that hasn't really, you know, translated into great results. On defense, things are a little bit different. We've got Jeffrey Simons. He's doubtful on the defensive line. We've got two guys questionable out there in the secondary, Hooker and Sneed. Hooker did practice on Saturday, but was limited with an upper body injury. I think he's pretty likely to play. Sneed also practiced, but was limited with a hamstring issue. And guys, a hamstring is not something you want to mess around with, especially early in the season. You uh, go a little bit too hard on that when it's not at 100%. And, uh, you know, all of a sudden you're dealing with a torn hamstring and all all of a sudden your entire season is, I mean, maybe not your whole season, but your season is in jeopardy for sure. So definitely significant concerns there. Uh, not, not, not looking at anywhere near full strength there for them on defense going up against a uh, Dolphins team who, you know, they've had their issues this season for sure as well, guys. Miami comes into this one, one and two on the season. They got that week one miracle win over Jacksonville, a game that was more like the Jags lost it than the Dolphins actually won it. And then they followed it up getting obliterated by the Bills and then obliterated at Seattle. So very rough stuff there for the Dolphins. Obviously losing Tua hasn't been a great look and the Dolphins are going to be big time switching things up here at quarterback, guys. They're handing the ball in this one to Tyler Huntley. He's coming over from Baltimore, being on their practice squad only a week ago. Now he's going to be starting for the Miami Dolphins. So pretty rough. A lot of, a lot to learn there coming over from a completely different situation. And now he's just going to be thrust into a starting role. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't blame him too much with how uh, Skylar Thompson looked a week ago. So we'll see how that goes. I do expect him to have a pretty limited uh, play sheet for him this week. And obviously Skylar Thompson being out here with that, uh, that you know, rib injury. It's excusable here, but man, this is not the way that Miami was hoping this season would work out. Having a completely unproven guy out there under center here in week four, very, very rough stuff. So we'll see what the offense can get done. I mean, obviously they've got all the all the offensive like weapons that you would need around somebody for him to have success right off the bat here. And he's got to be hoping he can make that happen. We've got A-Chain healthy for this game, expecting big things from him, or at least for him to get a big, big dose of action. Like they're going to be needing to get the ball into his hands as much as possible. Obviously, they would like to get the ball into the hands of Tyreek Hill down the field, but I don't know how much of that's going to happen. And Waddle down the field. This is a team that has so many offensive weapons, guys, but it's just really, really rough out there with no quarterback. Like, that's why you see guys like Tua and other guys like Trevor Lawrence. Like, if you think you have somebody that's even decent at quarterback and you can get him, you know, locked in there and you can just, you know, put weapons around him, you hope that things will work out. But man, you lose your guy and all of a sudden things could get very, very bleak. And that's what's going on here for Miami. Guys, uh, you know, in terms of their defense last week, they did what they could. They picked off Geno Smith twice, sacked him three times. They only gave up 100 rushing yards. So, I mean, I say only like that's amazing. That's obviously not amazing, but they did what they could to limit the rushing game. They did a really decent job against the pass there with those two interceptions, but they didn't have a lot of good answers there for DK Metcalf. Uh, I mean, I guess they limited Tyler Lockett, so that's nice, but this uh, this defense, I mean, they have to be very, very happy that they're taking on a much worse opponent this week, at least. That's got to be a major, a major, major plus for this team. But, man, things have just been so, so rough for the Dolphins this season. They're 22nd in the NFL in points against. So, yeah, the defense not really doing that great here right off the bat. The passing yards, all the other offensive statistics are all over the place. Just having a really, really rough time when you don't have your starting quarterback. Things go off the rails. So, let's take a quick look here at their injury report. we got Mostert dealing with a chest issue. Seems to be trending away from playing. Probably not going to be playing in this one. We don't know that for sure. And I'm not sure how much him being in or out moves the needle with A-Chain being healthy for this game. Armstead's going to be out and missing your right tackle. Not the best look, guys. So the offense not going to be at full strength, but really this is just a cobbled together situation that is going, they're going to want to run the ball a ton, given the fact that they are not going to have, you know, a quarterback out there that really is going to know the whole playbook. Defensively, the Dolphins are going to be uh, missing two starters with Fuller being out. So missing a, cor a corner in this matchup isn't great, but yeah, I mean, how big of a deal that is that you're going against Will Levis. Uh, David Long Jr. probably going to miss this game as well. We don't know for sure about that, but that will lead to the linebacker group not being at full strength, but how worried are you about the Titans running game? Probably not that terrified, so I don't think any of those issues are really huge, huge problems for Miami as they come into this game, you know, trying to figure some stuff out here. Looking at the weather for this one real quick, guys, uh, we've got, it's a little bit warm. It's going to be a little bit warm in Miami, so we could see a little bit of fatigue, and that's obviously something that will slightly favor the Dolphins in this game, but no glaring sun, like, you know, they're not going to really be able to put their, you know, opponent out there in the sun. That's not going to be a huge 
huge thing in this one. And we've got some super light rain possible late in the game, but no meaningful wind to deal with. So I don't think weather's a huge concern in this game. Looking at the way these teams have been trending this season, it's uh, been pretty bleak for both guys. Tennessee, 0-3 against the spread, 1-1-1 one, one, and one to the over-under this year. So they've had one push, one game go over, one game go under. Miami, they are 0-3 against the spread as well, guys. Both of these teams, one of them's going to get an against the spread win in this game. I almost guarantee it. Uh, we've also got uh, Miami at 0-3, or 3-0 and to the under this year. They've Every game they've played has gone under. So that's something to take into consideration for sure there as well. Guys, in terms of my side in this one, so far, public money looks to be on the Titans, and we're going to want to fade that at least a little bit here. It's starting to even out a bit, but Miami, they're a talented team across the board. Obviously, not having a starting quarterback in there is pretty rough, but they think they found something they like here in Huntley, so that could help. Uh, I do think there's reason to expect him to do some positive things and keep the mistakes to a bare, bare minimum, so they're going to be keeping things simple for him. I think we're going to see Miami come out on top in this game. Minus two and a half maybe feels a little bit steep, but I think they win this game by at least a field goal, and I do think there's some value in this on just taking Miami. I don't think this is going to be the get-right spot. People imagine it as, you know, possible there for the Titans. In terms of the over-under for this one, guys, I'm leaning towards the under. The Titans' offense, really bad with Levis under center, obviously. We're going to see Miami keep it on the ground a lot in this game, given their quarterback situation. The Titans, I think, would like to run the ball. I don't think they're super, super pumped about giving the ball to Levis and telling him to air it out, even if Miami is missing, you know, maybe one guy there in the secondary. I don't think this is some massive get right spot for Levis. I think that dude is just flat out not very good. So those are my two leans on the side in the over under guys going with Miami minus two and a half going with a little lean towards that under 37. Now let's go ahead and dive into some player props and some game props. I think we've got some interesting ones out there guys. The first two I'm going to look at are game props. I definitely think Miami and Tennessee are going to struggle to score points in this game. Struggle to find success even right out of the gate. So taking these teams to punt on their first drive seems extremely reasonable. I wouldn't even hate it if you parlayed this for them to, you know, like both have to punt on their first drive, but you can get Miami to punt on their first drive at minus 145, Tennessee at minus 160. So yeah, I think we're going to see plenty of action for the punters in this game. Not going to be too exciting out there, even in the early going. So yeah, I think those are very, very reasonable props out there. Not my favorite prices, obviously, but I think that's going to be the outcome on these drives the vast majority of the time. In terms of some player props, guys, I think we want to take a good look at a chain in this game. I think he's likely to have a good one. You can get him, uh, you know, 60 plus rushing yards at only minus 105. I think he's going to get tons and tons of action running the ball. I think we're going to see Mostert probably out for this game. So that guarantees he's going to get plenty of carries, plenty of attempts. I think he can get over 60 rush yards pretty comfortable here, comfortably here against a Tennessee defense that doesn't really impress me too much at the moment. And yeah, moving on from him, guys, we've got Pollard over 49 and a half rushing yards. I think we're going to see him get plenty of action as well. And yeah, I think we're going to see plenty of running the ball in this game. So getting over 49 and a half, you only got to get to 50 rushing yards. I don't think that's going to be too crazy in this one either. So yeah, go ahead and give me the running backs to get some solid work done in this one. I also really like a chain spot in this game, guys. I think taking him to get 100 plus rushing plus receiving yards. He's definitely a guy they like to use in the passing game. there a good amount. If you take him to get plus 100 rushing and receiving yards combined, Plus 145 seems like a very, very good price on that play. And right along with that, guys, I like him to score one plus touchdown in this game at plus 125. All of those combined, I think we could definitely see a very, very good day out of A-Chain in this one. Obviously, this isn't looking to be a very exciting, you know, a very awesome game to watch. But I think we're going to see the running game in effect here. And I do think we'll see the Dolphins grind out a win here behind a big game there from A-Chain. Hey, guys, jumping in here with a quick ad break. First of all, this is a great time to sign up at StumpTheSpread.com. Signing up for a premium membership gets you access to our entire team of cappers covering MLB, NCAA football, UFC, and the NFL. If you just want to test out the service, a great way to do that is by joining our free email list, which will get the occasional free or premium pick straight to your inbox. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you're new and become a channel member for early access to all of our NCAA football and NFL videos. Now guys, back to the games. Next up, guys, we've got the marquee game of the night. We've got the Seattle Seahawks going on the road to take on the Detroit Lions. Seattle, guys, they haven't had a, you know, a very hard way to go so far this season, and they've taken advantage of that easy schedule. They are 3-0 and on the year. They've, uh, you know, they've been great defensively, currently rated number one in defense, according to PFF. Seattle has not been playing good teams this season uh, and played close games against some kind of rough opponents, so we'll see how things look. They're going to have to try and attack the Detroit secondary, it would appear to me. 
Yeah, guys, last week, obviously that blowout win over Miami, but that's been their most comfortable win of the season by a long shot. In week one, they could have lost to Denver, a Denver team that's arguably looking much better over the last couple of weeks. Then they very nearly lost at New England, guys, winning that game 23 to 20, a very, very close game. So figuring things out last week against Miami, a team without a starting quarterback and with all kinds of issues, doesn't really impress me too much. We saw Geno Smith struggle a bit in that game. I mean, he passed for 289 yards, one touchdown, but got picked off twice, sacked three times, didn't do anything positive in the running game, actually rushed for negative two yards out there. So not really feeling this spot so much for Geno Smith. You're going up against a Detroit team that can definitely rush the quarterback and is not a bad defensive team. So a little bit worried about this spot for Geno Smith for sure. We'll see what he can get done out there. The running game, obviously behind Charbonnet, looked decent. I mean, 18 carries for 91 yards and two touchdowns. Very, very good stuff there. We expect them to try to run the ball in this game, but I don't think they're going to have too much success. Running the ball against the Detroit Lions can be a bit of a tough nut to crack. So we'll see how that goes. Obviously, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, two very, very good wide receiver options. Miami had no answers there for Metcalf, and I expect Seattle to try to get the ball into his hands early and often. He's a, just an insane, insane athlete out there. So expecting good stuff from him, and I'm going to be expecting that from him in pretty much any situation. As long as Geno Smith can get the ball into his hands, I think we're going to see some very, very good stuff there. But yeah, Seattle, definitely a proving spot for them. They haven't faced anybody nearly as good as the Lions so far this season. So now is the time to put up or shut up and show what you can do here. But going on the road could be a little bit rough. And looking at the uh, injury report here from Seattle, we've got some, some problems showing up. I mean, their offense, they come into this game completely healthy. That's got to be a great feeling. You've got a healthy offensive line coming into this game. That's great. All of your weapons are going to be out there. All good there for Geno Smith. But on the other side of the ball, we got a lot of problems, guys. The defense is going to be short three starters, and the front four is decimated here for Seattle, guys. I mean, we, they've even got second stringers, two second stringers already confirmed out, so there's not going to be any, like, real talent in there if guys are getting breathers. Even, you know, like, they bought too many injuries, guys. Too many injuries there in the front four. We see the linebacker core not going to have everyone either. So this Seattle team is going to be very, very vulnerable to the running game against a Lions team that definitely likes to run the ball. Seattle's had a great time offensively so far this season, but how much of that has been due to their week schedule? I mean, good, you looked great in week one against a, and I'm not even that great in week one against a rookie quarterback. Then you looked good against not a starting level quarterback at New England in a game you barely won. And then last week you were pretty good against a Miami team that really is completely in shambles. So how good is this defense really? We're about to find out here, guys, as they go up against the Lions. They've been a pretty unlucky team so far this season, with the big exception of that uh, terrible, terrible call that went against Arizona, where the Lions got called for a delay of game, which would have otherwise been a pick six. But last week, getting the 20-13 win at Arizona, good to go on the road and get a win for sure. Now they get to go back home and see if they can kind of straighten things out. A Detroit team that, you know, while they're two and one on the year, doesn't feel like they've played their best ball, but they have played against three teams that all at least came into this season with playoff aspirations. Maybe not looking like Arizona and the Rams are going to be able to do that, but a lot of that for the Rams is due to injury and Arizona. It's still a long season. We'll see how things come together for them. So yeah, the running game has been very, very good for the Lions this season. That's definitely something you're going to concentrate on in this game. I mean, last week we saw Montgomery and Gibbs both go nuts against Arizona and they're getting to run against a very, very banged up Seattle. Seattle defense, especially, you know, in the front. The secondary looks probably okay. They're going to be fine. But man, that front four, that linebacker group, things are looking very, very bleak. So they're going to want to be taking advantage of that for sure, which could take the ball a little bit out of Jared Goff's hands, which so far this season, that doesn't sound like a terrible thing. He hasn't had the best year. He passed for two touchdowns, one interception, got sacked twice against Arizona, but just doesn't feel like, you know, he's completely on point, which this could be something of a get right spot for him, at least in theory. But also, guys, I think things should should open up for him in the passing game if they're able to run the ball as easily as I expect. So definitely seeing good things here for the Lions running game. Maybe good things for Goff as well. Definitely should be a situation where he'll be able to limit his mistakes. And I think if they, you know, end up, we end up with a lot of guys in the box, you get one-on-one -on -one coverage, coverage on Amon Ross St. Brown. He's going to be open for some big plays. So we'll see how that goes. Generally speaking, I'm expecting good stuff here from this Lions offense. And yeah, Goff not being in rhythm hasn't been great, but this might be a good spot for him to kind of get back in. The offensive edge definitely has to go to Detroit in this game with their running game on terms of their defense. Things have been a bit up and down, but not not def definitely not terrible. I mean, giving up only 13 points to the Cardinals last week. They did a relatively okay job of containing Kyler Murray, but they completely shut down the rest of the Cardinals running game. So 
that's a good look. Obviously, uh, they had a rough time against Tampa Bay there in week two, but week one, they did some good things against the Rams. Not an easy opponent back when the Rams had all of their weapons, but right now, guys, I think this is a pretty good defense. Obviously, they're still their top 10 in points against, so that's something to look at. And for sure, this is a team that definitely prides itself on being able to run the ball. So let's take a quick look here at their injury report. Detroit, they're going to have their starting center out, so that's not great. But if he has to be missing time, this game against a team with a completely decimated defensive line seems like a pretty good time for him to be out. Uh, other than that, the offense looking very, very healthy coming into this game. So that's obviously a very big deal there. Gotta love seeing that if you're a Detroit Lions fan. In terms of their defense, they're almost completely healthy. They have their entire dominant defensive line healthy and ready to go. And that's going to be a big, big deal. If you can get Geno Smith on the run, uh, you know, good things can happen for you out there. We've seen that time and time again. And yeah, guys, this defense has been pretty scary, especially that pass rush. The Lions are a team that can absolutely dominate a game in the trenches and there's a decent chance we could see that happening in this game, especially since they are so healthy there in the trenches, and we see that not really being the case for Seattle, especially on defense. So looking at the uh, the trends in this game, guys, Seattle, they're 1-1-1 one, one, and one against the spread so far this season, 2-1 and one to the over this year. Detroit, they're 2-1 and one against the spread, and 3-0 and oh to the under this season. So kind of interesting there to see Detroit trending to be an under team, but that can make some sense if you look at how they like to run the ball. So looking at the side in this game, guys, I don't think you're going to be too shocked we like the Detroit Lions in this one they come into this game healthy and while they've gone two and one this year it feels like they haven't really played their best ball yet they haven't really been in a rhythm Goff has to play better and he has so far far been okay, but yeah, they're kind of unwilling to run the ball consistently. I think if they do that, they can dominate this game in the trenches. Seattle is very banged up, especially on defense, and while they're decimated this season, they have beaten three teams that are extremely likely to finish this year uh, you know, outside the playoffs, so probably should have lost that game against New England, and they could have lost to Denver there in week one, like I was saying, so I think this Seattle team comes into this one being a bit overvalued there just based on their record against some pretty weak opponents, and the fact that they're not at full health for this game is a big, big deal. So definitely give me the Lions to win and cover this game at home in terms of the over-under here. I really don't have a huge lean, unfortunately. Like, Detroit could dominate this game on defense and concentrate on the running the ball. And, yep, I mean, the defense could completely hold Seattle in check, leading to a super low-scoring game. But we could also theoretically see this being a shootout with Seattle's passing game getting going since they do technically have a healthy offensive line. But I think Detroit's defense is going to keep Geno off balance for this game and we'll end up with a low total. So go ahead and give me a small, small taste of the under if you are really, really determined to be betting, you know, the over under in this game. I do think the under is probably the side and it's a prime time under. I know this haven't been quite as good recently this season, but I do think across the board, I think overall that trend still holds relatively true. In terms of some props for this game, we've got some pretty interesting ones out there. First of all, guys, we've got a game prop. Detroit to score on their first drive, I think, is pretty reasonable. If you take them to score on their first drive, you can get it at even odds. I don't think we're going to see this Seattle defense have a very good time in this game. They might get a little bit stronger as the game goes on and some guys get used to the, you know, the spots that they're going to be plugged into, given that all the people that are missing. But I don't think that's going to happen right off the bat. I think Detroit could score. You could even take them to score a touchdown in their first drive if you wanted. But I kind of lean towards the slightly... Uh, conservative route and just taking them to score in general. I think we'll see them at least get a field goal here on their first drive. This is not a Detroit team that is going to come out and mess around here. I think they're going to be very locked in. Um, I, yeah, I just don't think they're going to have a hard time going against a Seattle defense that is missing so many guys. A Seattle prop that I'm interested, a player prop that I'm interested, I think Seattle is going to be down in this game. I think they're going to have to try and throw the ball. I don't think they're going to have very much success in the ground game. So taking their best wide receiver, DK Metcalf, to have a good game makes a lot of sense to me. If you take them to get 70 plus receiving yards, you can get them at plus one. 105. I think that seems extremely reasonable. I think he's going to get quite a few targets on this one. The concern is that Detroit is going to be pressuring Geno Smith and, you know, trying to keep him off balance. And obviously Metcalf is somebody you got to focus on, but man, him with the ball in his hands in the open field, anything could happen. So it could only take him two, maybe three catches to get to 70 plus receiving yards. Obviously, you know, all the defensive things we've talked about in the, you know, in the NFL this season could make that a little bit rougher, but I do think there's some value in taking the over, uh, you know, 70 yards there at that reasonable price. 
Another, uh, you know, a same, same situation, same type of deal here for Seattle. We've got Tyler Lockett at 45 plus receiving yards at minus 115. He's going to soak up quite a few targets. Obviously, it doesn't take that many receptions to get over 45 receiving yards. And yeah, obviously, they're going to have to be throwing the ball in this game, or at least that's my prognostication here. I think they're very likely to be throwing the ball a lot in this one. So taking another wide receiver here for Seattle to get, a, you know, a few receptions to get over 45 yards seems extremely reasonable. That minus 115 price tag, maybe not amazing, but 45 yards is not that many guys and I think we see him get there uh, the vast majority of the time. In terms of some Lions player props that I like, David Montgomery, 70 plus rushing yards. You can get that at plus 115. That sounds great to me, guys. I think we're going to see a lot of people hammering these over props on the Lions running game here. I mean, Montgomery looked great last week. This week, he gets to go up against a decimated, uh, you know, defensive front four there for Seattle. So, yeah, give me Montgomery to have a good, good game in this one. I think we're going to see him do some very, very positive stuff out there in the running game. You could even talk me into more yards in this. The problem is that, you know, they sometimes split carries him and Gibbs so that could make things a little bit rougher but I think we'll see him I don't think it'll take that many rushes for him to get to 70 yards either I mean if he gets to you know 18 rushes I think or you know 16 maybe even I think we'll easily see him get to that 70 yards without too much trouble and getting that at plus money feels like a very very good spot out there to me in terms of the passing game here for Detroit I don't think they're going to want to go too nuts here I don't think they're going to really they've got to be losing a little bit of trust here in golf right I mean that's what I it would be happening to me for sure. I'm not a head coach in the NFL, obviously, so maybe that's not the case, but taking the under on Goff's passing yards, under 249 and a half passing yards, it's minus 135. I think the odds makers, uh, you know, see this as a definite possibility of this happening. I think that's why you see that price tag. And yeah, generally speaking, I think they're going to want to keep the ball out of Goff's hands at least a little bit. No reason probably for them to be throwing it a lot either. I think they'll be wanting to control time of possession in this game. So yeah, taking the under on that number seems extremely reasonable to me. And even if they let Goff throw it, you know, quite a few times. We haven't seen him putting up big gaudy numbers. I mean, last week he threw it 23 times against the Cardinals, only 199 passing yards for him in that game. So I think taking the under on this number is extremely, extremely reasonable. The only way that one goes against us, I feel like, is if this ends up in some sort of weird shootout. Also, guys, I do think, and while this may seem a little bit counterintuitive, I think you want to take a look at Amon Ross St. Brown to score a touchdown in this game. This is a guy they want to keep happy. This is obviously their best wide receiver. He scored a touchdown last week, had seven receptions, eight targets. So every almost every time they're throwing in the ball, he's managing to be open, make those catches. He's a monster out there. And if you take him to score one plus touchdown, you can get him at plus 125. That seems like a very good price to me. Definitely somebody they want to target there in the red zone and even outside of the red zone, like against the Seattle defense especially when they start having to pack the box to try and stop the run I think that's going to open up maybe not the deep balls I don't think see them throwing too many deep balls in this game but Amon Ross St. Brown definitely somebody that can make things happen there after the catch so taking him here at plus 125 to you know break it off and get into the end zone for sure makes some sense to me that's all we've got for the two Monday night football games guys now let's switch gears a little bit and we are going to look at this crazy crazy mess that we've got going on in the MLB guys we've got two games scheduled here for Monday we've got two games it's a doubleheader between the Mets and the Atlanta Braves as they try and determine who is going to end up in the playoffs here. And it's not just the Mets and the Braves involved in this, guys. The Arizona Diamondbacks' fate is going to be determined in this game. And they're not in too great of a spot. So I'm going to break this down, guys. The way it works is Atlanta, if they sweep, so if they win both of these games, we're going to see Atlanta and Arizona in the playoffs. If we see the Mets sweep, same scenario. Basically, we're going to see the Mets in the playoffs and Arizona also in. However, if we have any version of a split, Atlanta wins one, Mets win one, either way, it doesn't matter which game, obviously, then we're going to see Atlanta and the Mets both in the playoffs and the Arizona Diamondbacks out, you know, just having to watch, which would be really, really rough for this insanely talented offense to miss out on the playoffs. But they played pretty bad down the stretch. They have no one really to blame but themselves. They did go, they did win yesterday. They did dominate San Diego, so good stuff there. But a little bit too little, a little bit too late. Your fate is not in your hands. It's a very, very weird situation here. Um, you know, and I think Atlanta is really, really in the driver's seat because they have Chris Sale ready to go here. Right now, we don't have confirmed 
starters yet for the Mets in either of their games. So going to want to be checking back into the pin comment. I'm assuming we still don't have odds yet for these games, either no numbers. We do have numbers for the first game. Okay, cool. We have numbers for the first game. The Mets are plus 130. The Braves are minus 154. And that makes sense to me for sure because we've got the Braves. They're going to be handing the ball in this one to Spencer Schwellenbach, who comes into this game. His last start was against the Mets, guys, and he was dominant. I mean, over the course of the season, this young guy, only 24 years old, has put up great numbers. He's 8-7 and seven on the year, a 3.47 ERA. His last start, guys, was against the Mets. He went seven innings, gave up three hits, only a single earned run in that game, struck out four, walked one in a 5-1 to one win there for the Atlanta Braves. And his start before that, he dominated Cincinnati. Start before that, he was very good against the Dodgers, a hard-hitting team, obviously. Start before that, he did struggle against Toronto, but that's been a while ago, and we're not too worried about that. I'm expecting pretty good stuff from Schwellenbach in this game. Obviously, we need to see the Mets starter before we decide if we wanted to bet on this or anything like that. But we are definitely leaning a little bit, at least here, towards Atlanta in the first game. And I also think you would want to lean a bit towards the under. I mean, we've got an over-under of eight in this one, and this is this is basically a playoff game, guys. Like, we are going to see offense at a premium this game. The Mets are going to be doing everything they can. Obviously, uh, definitely advantage in the bullpen situation goes to the Atlanta Braves here as well. But I think we're going to see a low-scoring game. So I would lean more towards the under right now. And once we see, you know, the, who's starting this game for the Mets, we could go a little bit deeper. But now when game two comes around, this is why Atlanta has a massive, massive advantage here, guys. They are going to be able to just hand the ball to Chris Sale if they need to. If Atlanta loses this first game, they've got Sale just waiting in the wings to pitch. He's going to come out. He's going to dominate. I would make it, I would slam it on the Braves to win game two if they lose game one because Sale's going to go out there and I could see the dude throw in eight or nine innings and shutting out the Mets. Like it's going to be decimation here if we see him pitching in this game, or at least that's what I would guess. Obviously weird things happen, but I'm expecting very, very good stuff from Chris Sale, but I'm mostly expecting him not to pitch in this uh, you know, situation. If Atlanta can win that first game, then they just go ahead and sit Sale. They've got him ready for the playoffs. Just waiting, just ready to go. Probably the best pitcher in the MLB. I mean, very close. One of the best, two or three for sure. So we'll see how that goes. But if it comes down to game two, definitely you're going to be wanting to slam it on the Atlanta Braves, I would think. Also, there could be over-under numbers to look at for sure. Unfortunately, guys, we can't go too much deeper on this game because we don't have these two games because we don't have confirmed starters there for the Mets. But I just wanted to go ahead and break this down. A very confusing situation. I, it took me a while of looking at it to make sure that I had everything locked down. But yeah, right now, that's what we've got. Any sweep, Arizona is in, and the team that sweeps is obviously in, and the team that gets swept is out. Any split here, we are going to see the Arizona Diamondbacks miss the playoffs. So very, very rough for them. But yeah, guys, that's what we've got in this uh, you know MLB situation. So guys, I appreciate you watching these videos. That's all we have for today. Hit that like button for good luck on all of your bets, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Let me know in the comments any questions you have on today's slate. Thanks for watching. You can click the link in the description to check out StumpTheSpread.com, and we'll see you guys tomorrow for more sports, betting, action.